أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين وحبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المكرمين الغرر الميامين سيما بقية الله في الأرضين وحجته على الخلائق أجمعين سيدنا وإمام زماننا وصاحب نعمتنا وولي أمرنا مهدي هذه الأمة وطاووس أهل الجنة الحجة بن الحسن العسكري فداه أرواح العالمين قال الله الحكيم في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم So here we are in Canada, one of the most prosperous countries on earth, one of the most beautiful countries on earth. Now you may not have the nuclear arsenal that your neighbors down to the south have, or the four hundred billion dollars in annual military spending, or the love and admiration that the rest of the world display so passionately for their president but at least you have universal health insurance in fact I've heard so much about the Canadian health insurance that I'm planning inshallah to have a Botox and a nose job while I'm here Ajaz <laughs> is that okay no that's not covered no plastic surgery well I knew I should have gotten that while I was in Thailand. It's actually cheaper and gets done while you're standing, usually in a street corner. But the truth is, it really is a beautiful country, isn't it? In fact, let me just stop here and say something. I believe that as Muslims, as people who worship the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as people who follow the tradition of the Prophet of Islam and his immaculate progeny, we ought to give something back to the society, to the country that embraced us. I really feel that we need to extend our hands. You know, sometimes they call it outreach programs. It's not an outreach program. It's an in-reach program. The society, the country, the nation that welcomed us with open arms. We need to do something in return. We need to be good citizens and we all know that. I remember saying to a group of brothers in Australia that it is forbidden in the religion of Islam to violate traffic laws. Traffic laws. Because traffic laws are enacted by people who happen to be professionals in their field. People who have nothing on their mind but this one simple objective to keep you safe and so for you to cross the road where there is no pedestrian crossing that's wrong some scholars actually go to the extreme well or what is seen by others as an extreme position where they say to cross a red light is a sin you get punished for that by the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this country is a beautiful country you are here for a reason that reason was to seek comfort, security, financial freedom. And a lot of you have got that. That's why you came here. If you hadn't achieved your objective, you'd probably go back. Your kids, they grew up in this country. Many of them don't even speak another language. So we got to do something in return. It's a beautiful country. However, Imagine a world where every eight seconds a woman gets raped. 
Imagine a world where every 11 seconds a human being gets killed. Not a mouse or a duck, no. Ducks are too cute to be killed. In fact, there are laws to make sure that that doesn't take place. A human being gets killed every 11 seconds. Imagine a world where nine out of every 10 deaths is caused by poverty. Shocking statistics. In other words, if poverty was not dominant in the world, people would continue to live. People would have longer lifespans. Imagine a world where crime is rampant. I mean, seriously, how do you interpret the evening news? You sit down, you turn on your television, and you start watching the news. How do you interpret the events that are taking place on a global scale? How do you comment on the poverty, on the death, on the carnage, on the bloodshed, on the famine, on the fear, on the anger, on the rage, on the war? There's only one word to describe that. Apocalypse. Now at the expense of sounding a little bit melodramatic, just look at the world around you. It is in a state of chaos. Your lifestyle in this country is a lot better than elsewhere. But the truth of the matter is, what is predominant in this world today is bloodshed, war, famine, poverty, death, fear. The very element of fear. How excruciating is that? I might be exaggerating the fear or the death or the carnage. But the truth is, the apocalypse is not as far-fetched a reality that we might think. The Holy Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, performed the pilgrimage to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, today we refer to it as Hajjatul Wada'. As far as I can tell, I haven't done any specialized research in the field, but as far as I can tell from historical texts, the Prophet only performed the Hajj once in his lifetime. And that Hajj was the first and the last. It's referred to as Hajjatul Wada', but it was also the first Hajj. Now, the Prophet made an effort to inform the people of the most important things that they need as human beings during that Hajj. The reasons were numerous. One, there were many, many Muslims taking part in that pilgrimage.